but the main window of time for future severe weather is now through about four o'clock. Strong winds will continue, especially east of that storm line. We'll still have some times of general breezy to windy conditions, but within and close to those stronger storms, there can be some damaging wind gusts. We've already seen some wind gusts clocked at about 60, 65, even 70 miles per hour in a few points, and that is certainly still possible. I'd say a couple of tornadoes can spin up along that line, but it's going to be focused in the eastern Big Bend, Suwannee River region, and in south central Georgia along and east of Interstate 75. Now until 4 o'clock, so we'll still have that opportunity for some impactful storms, and you should still be aware of what's happening around you uh, before we get out of the afternoon when things really start to settle down. Here's a sampling of various storm reports already received across the area today. We had numerous severe thunderstorm warnings, producing several reports of severe level wind gusts across Leon County, sections of Madison County as well, into Miller County as those thunderstorms were coming through. They were issued, they, they did have a tornado warning for those earlier in the morning in Donaldsonville and in Colquitt, Georgia. Uh, definitely some strong wind gusts. Here's one report of a 61 mile per hour wind gust from the University of Georgia weather network there in the Donaldsonville area. So another verification of very strong winds associated with those active thunderstorms. We did have reports of tornadoes in Jackson County and there were uh, images of damage to an RV park there. Uh, so uh, certainly some indications of tornadic impacts there. There's the structural damage report to the east southeast of Mariana. And one earlier tornado warning that we had in southwestern Leon County uh, based on a detection mode on the radar that shows debris in the air. And this was from about 1030. This is not current, but about two hours ago, there was a report uh, based on some radar data that a tornado may have touched down southwest of Fort Braden. But check out all these wind reports across uh, Leon County. Many uh, of those are even from before we had the thunderstorms coming through. We had wind gusts that caused some downed trees. We also had uh, trees down around Buck Lake Road on the far eastern side there near FSU, Nylick, and Richmond. So even before storms arrived in our area, we had quite a bit of storm action. But now those storms are pushed out of the metro and moving to the east. And that's where we still have the high chance for some hazardous wind gusts across our eastern areas. The tornado risk, I'd say maybe half of this medium shade will put it at that level. There still can be a couple that spin up. Hail, not so much of a concern, definitely more of a tertiary concern, I guess you can say. And if we do have flooding, it's mostly going to be from onshore winds that have already uh, buffeted the coastal areas, and that's pushed some water uh, higher and on typical dry ground by a couple feet. So mostly a minor phase, but still, nonetheless, there can be at least some uh, coastal flooding and maybe some quick inundation of heavy rain in some areas can cause nuisance flooding. So the expectation for numerous severe storms shaved into our eastern areas through the rest of the day. Tri-state areas, not much of an ongoing risk for severe weather, but in a very narrow corridor for at least another couple hours, there still can be a spin up along that line that can prompt a long lasting tornado. I think that chance at this point is less than 10%. But nonetheless, the Storm Prediction Center still highlights the Oscilla and Withlacoochee and northern edge of the Alapa River area within our zone for a possibility of a long lasting, a long track tornado that can be pretty strong. And that strong, damaging, destructive wind gust threat also focuses in our eastern areas. That's been shaved out in our western zones. So still breezy, but not necessarily destructive. Could still have gusts that do reach around 70 to 75 miles per hour in the strongest portions of that thunderstorm line. So here's how it moves out. The forecast and focus going a little faster than I had expected, but nonetheless, it seems like most of the activity is gone by about four o'clock. We'll put the window, the end window at that point for our local area. Maybe a few straddling showers behind that, but it looks like by late this afternoon, much of the uh, severe weather concerns will be behind us. And then we can look forward to a dry out for tomorrow after rain totals that uh, in many areas can maybe reach up to an inch, maybe two in some isolated occurrences.